very hyperactive, shall we say. But he channeled all that energy into playing sport. When she found my box of needles, that was one of the worst things I've ever had to explain. I was in shock. I just didn't understand and I was... It was also new to me. Went downhill pretty bad the last 12 months. Pretty much threw my job in, my wife kicked me out. Ice has been called the most dangerous and destructive drug of our time. And it's one of the hardest addictions to fight. Courtney started out as an experimental user. First couple of years was good, it was fun. I was really good at hiding it. But seven years down the track, he was injecting ice daily. It's like you don't realise you're going downhill. On nearly any major street in Grafton, they can go and get ice. It is so readily available. From the moment we found out about Courtney's addiction, it has been um, a roller coaster ride. It's been an absolute nightmare. This story of slow decline is shared by more than 70,000 dependent ice users across Australia. And the fallout from an addiction spreads to the entire family. Um, flight centre. We were trying to get him detoxing and getting him ready for rehab. We're talking about being told there would be seven month wait to get into a rehab. No, Nick, please. Just for tonight, son. Ice tears families apart. Go on out. No, Nick. Shut up! It's all well and good for the government to be putting on commercials about ice, but they need more rehabs. I had a friend who actually suggested I go on Google rehabs in Thailand. It was the last resort. From a mother's perspective, I just had to do something. Because I could see him slowly killing himself. Courtney's mum, Julie, came across Hope, a rehab clinic two hours from Bangkok. It was able to accommodate Courtney straight away. When I first saw this place, um, I thought, wow, like, this is a rehab. <laughs> We've got the pool. I pretty much thought I was on a little holiday until all the counselling started and, you know, the come down. At least half the clients at Hope are ice addicts from Australia. All the counsellors are former addicts themselves, including Simon, who started the clinic. It's just there's so much demand for this service you know, that I need to be grateful to the Australian government for, um, for not providing adequate treatment because we've been able to sort of uh, build a strong foundation um, on having a, a lot of clients come from Australia. The night before I left to come to Hope here in Thailand, I, I had my last bit of ice. It was probably a four day bender. I really want to get clean. I want to be a good husband. And I've got a baby coming in six weeks, so... That was another big factor. Where to? Courtney tells me he's ready to put an end to his addiction. His wife, aunt, cousins are all supporting him. So are his parents. They've dipped into their retirement savings to cover the cost. Around $10,000 for a one-month stay. And I'm all... One wife was, you know, the attic drug dealer. And then the other wife was family man. Courtney's settling into the mostly Western style program. He's going to do a lot of group therapy and a lot of talking. And that drip, what you said, how you spoke. We try and um, get them all to come out of their shells, as it were, and be honest to each other. As a meth user, did that inhibit your goals that you would set with your wife? Oh, definitely. I was just a bit hazy, I was living my own little life and not caring about the wife I wasn't even there for. So you have a child on the way, right? Yeah. How's that going to be affected? Well, I'll just have to get my shit together and 
be the husband and family man I say I'm going to be. Uh, week one, the first week I was here, <laughs> I was fucking hating life. I'd walk out of half the classes, I actually rang up my mum, I said, have you paid for the rehab yet? Because fuck, I'm about to, I'm about to leg it. Slowly got better. Examples of negative character traits. Self-obsession. It's early days and Courtney's sticking with the treatment. But is 30 days of therapy enough to kick an ice habit? He's got his work cut out. Yeah, so on one hand, he's come here willingly and he wants to change his life. He wants to be clean. He wants to get back the things he lost. But on the other hand, you know, he's got so much entrenched behavior and thinking patterns, it's going to be a lot of work for him to make that happen. Might be something to work on, but... <laughs> to succeed, the recovery plan requires extraordinary willpower and total abstinence from drugs and alcohol long term. There were lots and lots of times where he said, no, I'm never touching that. I'm never touching that again. No, I've had it. I won't do that. And he always went back. He just could not keep away from it. Yes. His mum hopes the 30-day rehab program will help him turn his life around. Right. The first phone call I got from Courtney, he was acting like a, um, a, a spoiled child who didn't like where he was. Right. I, I love you. To be honest. Bye. Bye. The stakes are huge. You know, but it's all up to him. Do you have a difficult time with conflict, let's say? Is it if someone has a go at you? As Courtney continues his treatment at Hope, yeah. I head four hours north to a very different rehab centre. This temple is called Wat Tamkrabok. It's also known as the Vomiting Temple. It's run by Buddhist monks who've helped more than 100,000 people get off drugs for the past 55 years. Atama Pravijit Akratito, Upasombot Ma Sansuka Pansa. God, like that, till I Upasombot Chema, La Hinba, Sing Tila Diamond, Mika, Moon, Moon Pet Moon Poin, and Sasana Kutne, Takawa, Pensasana, Tisama, Tame, Salong, Pontuka. The monks will offer help to anyone who needs it for free. And a growing number of Australians are braving the extreme rehab method for which Wat Damkrabok is famous, including Steve from WA. I swear by this place, you know, that there's only one chance in Damkrabok. If you don't succeed that time, you can't come back. The treatment relies on secret medicine used to purge the body of toxins. In the surrounding forests, I see scenery. The monks see ingredients. Do you test? Huh. Oh, wow. It's like the most bitter thing you could find in Western food, like doubled. Yeah. Ravicha, what did you just give me to eat? Medicine, medicine. <laughs> I guess we'll see what happens when this is mixed with 120 other different herbs and given to a bunch of recovering addicts. In 1956, opium became illegal here, leaving millions of Thai addicts suffering from withdrawal. One addict stumbled across the temple and the monks boiled him a lotus flower, which, through placebo, willpower or magic, made the addict feel he was cured. This lotus flower potion has evolved into a concoction of over 120 ingredients. Like Australia, Thailand is going through its own ice epidemic. 
New edicts arrive daily. Before they're given treatment, they take a sacred vow called a sacha, where they swear off a list of drugs. The satcha is taken extremely seriously. The breaking of it, just once, is said to carry a curse. Immediately after taking the oath, they get their first taste of the medicine. Thawat Pong is an ice addict from Bangkok. He's tried other mainstream treatments without success, and he's about to experience the vomit ritual. ตอนนี้ก็ยังกลัวอยู่ครับถึงขั้นบอกว่ากลัวฮะถึงขั้นบอกว่ากลัวฮะถึงขั้นบอกว่ากลัวฮะถึงขั้นบอกว่ากลั
Across Thailand, Wat Tam Krabok is notorious, and for half a century, Thai kids here have grown up fearing it. But today, a group of local school children have arrived for the Thai version of Scared Straight. They're here for a lesson in what taking drugs can lead to. Far from home and put through the physical hell of repeated vomiting, it's as though they're jolted into recovery. What have you struggled with? Struggled with? I'm oh, missing the family. Missing my wife and my daughter very much. Yeah. Um, and I've struggled with um, the vomiting, really. That was, that was the hardest part. Yeah. That was very difficult. Physically, struggled with that, yeah. But emotionally, it's the family that I miss. But I'm doing this for them too, you know, commitments for them as, as well as for me. It's to save everyone. Figures on long-term recovery are sketchy. But the temple claims that among foreigners, the success rate is 90%. If that's true, it would make it the most successful drug rehab program in the world. Spending a few days at the Vomit Temple makes Western-style rehab look like a walk in the park. I want to see how Courtney's getting on now that his stay at the Hope Clinic is nearly over. But why didn't you do a bit before then? Do you know so that it's a massive risk? Do you know that it's a massive risk? As an alcoholic, and it wasn't an immediate process. You know, Here, there's no fine. physical hell to rival the temple, but there is confrontation. It's Courtney's last day, and the group is challenging him on his long-term recovery plan. What will happen when the baby's crying and doing your head in and you can't take no more, or you had an argument with the missus, what, what are you going to do? Regardless of what happens now, I'm not going back to the I know, I, I know people have been here relapse, so I really listen to what they have to say. What did they say? No, they're telling me not to drink at all as well, but... That's my choice, and I, I like having a social drink with my family. Though. So you're hearing them, but you're not really you're not listening. listening. And I think you're in denial. It's Bad denial. OK. Don't you understand that? To I'm going to fucking what? sit here and lie to you so I'm going to go home and not drink. That's no, 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 I'm on your side, because I have to drink. That's the addict coming out of me and lying. Like, why lie again? I'm not, that's me starting my relapse already, lying to you. So just let it be. Thank you. I, I, Got a bit intense, I because well, I said I'm going home to have a have a drink. You know, I've never been an alcoholic, never been a big drinker. And they reckon it could lead to relapse. I came here for a month. I've done my treatment. I've, I've had enough. You know, I'm ready to go home. I really am. Gratitude. Uh, as you all know, uh, Jordan and uh, Courtney are going to leave us today. Yeah, I want to wish you uh, all the best. Your family is coming. I want to wish you all the best with them. Have a good time and uh, go to the meetings back in Australia. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think I could meet such good friends in here, especially you. <laughs> back home, I probably would have told you to fuck off. <laughs> 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 but I've never had such a best group of people around me. That's it. Courtney's month-long treatment at Hope is officially over, and he's preparing to continue his recovery at home. But he's not returning to Grafton just yet. It's not here already. 
He's waiting for his aunt and cousin to pick him up for a week-long holiday in Bangkok. A bit of a reward, we're going to a temple, do a bit of shopping, check out Thailand while I'm here. About time. <laughs> Hello. Hi, mate. Good. Hi, mate. Awesome. Oh, sorry. You look good. Thank you. <laughs> what are your concerns about Courtney going to Bangkok? Yeah, well, we're very concerned. In the end, you know, we allowed him to go with his auntie, who absolutely will not allow any drinking or partying of any description. So uh, I felt safe with his uh, family arriving. And actually, I felt safe also with the change that I, I've started to see uh, in, in Courtney. So, so at the moment, it seems like that's the plan, that he will spend time in Thailand with his family. And they will take responsibility for that. Any last words? Catch up. <laughs> <laughs> that's about it. I think that's it. Well. After experiencing the monk's vomit therapy, Steve is committed to staying clean. I'm very confident to, to be able to continue as I am now. And, and I'm, I'm dead set serious about my, my, my journey in the future to, um, to get right from the scourge that I've been um, dealing with. For the family, for me, for Chang, I want to be the husband that she married. And I'd say to anyone to take the trip to Thailand and spend time at Tumka Bok. If you, you know, it'll save you. It's turned me around in a matter of months. Courtney's taking some time out before reuniting with his pregnant wife. I was anxious to get out, but then I was a bit scared at the same time. But, um, but yeah, getting home's gonna be another test itself. He may not have taken all of the rehab advice on board, but he's feeling optimistic. I'm really looking forward to going home being sober and going back to work and being a dad and a better husband. I feel, well, I feel good in my recovery. I shouldn't have a relapse in me. Anyone that needs help, I, I recommend it. Yeah.